Blancat Metalworks and October 26 or 27 <laughs> and uh, this is CBM 10V at uh, six, overall 67 uh, Rockwell harness and um, this is going to be you know, the sharpening of this uh, high uh, carbide volume. You mean a lot of vanadium and also the matrix is very hard. The matrix I estimate probably going to be about between 62 and 64 Rockwell. Together with the carbine, it makes overall about 67 Rockwell or so. And anyway, so what you, I mean, this is uh, it's, it's very thin right now, it's almost have an edge already. But sharpening is about you, you sort of uh, shaping it, the bevel, toward a wedge. And then at the very, you know, the, the connection or the, 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 the intersect point, if you want to be as thin as possible, that is your apex. Anyway, and because it's set the high uh, carbine, so they pretty much seal the matrix. So shaping it is not going to be as, as uh, like when you work with the other carbon or something more simpler. And so when you initially, when you go through excavating or, you know, plowing mode to, to make it look, you know, so it's going to highlight thin, if you use something like this, it's the uh, bamboo, um, I couldn't say the name, but anyway, it's 150 grit or so. And it's, it's alumina, actually, and the um, abrasive size is fairly large. So, but because, but it's not as hard. So, the, there is still plowing ha action going on, but when you go, when you have eat at leading to it or even trailing, you need a lot of pressure to plow. But there is more than plow, there is collision. And so when you have the edge, when you apex it, doesn't mean the, the no longer flat top, they kind of over, you make the complete wedge, you could uh, do a lot of fracture because you have a lot of lateral. So this, I only use the edge over here, thinner here. To, to grind to, I mean, when I need to grind or polish something that uh, not as high as uh, uh, 10V or out of vanadium carbide, with a lot of vanadium carbide or tungsten carbide, but tungsten is finer. So, this is like a 60 actually, or even 80 or 60 silicon carbide here, black silicon carbide, and this is actually glazed over. So but, and it's well, it can act like 240 to 500 or 600 grit. And I use these for, I use these with, uh, excuse me, this is 150 grit uh, silicon carbine, and this is like 550 grit green silicon carbine to put on here. And I use that sterling, and this is 360, and I got 600 and 1200 or 1500 as well to kind of dope this thing so that I can use it. But anyway, for this knife, um, to start in grit here, I would use this cheap uh, silicon carbine. You can use diamond. I got the 120 grit cedar, but it gets so dull. You, again, when it's dull, it's no longer plowing. You have more collision. Dull collision it's not good for any edge except the, one, the steel that have high ductility. That means you can burn it of plastic movement. So I worn out all my diamond. And here the diamond. And this is, uh, uh, I think, this coarse. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the blue is coarse, I think. Anyway, yeah, coarse. 320 or something like that. And I wore them the pretty mud. It's dull. It's just dull. And well, the fine, the 600 grit is not too bad. I, mean, it, I use it. And uh, to actually go beyond after the excavating or plowing step, it, you pretty much clean up. You have, you have every, every irregularity of surface. So it's got teeth, if you want to say, and you, you everywhere. So, and then you kind of clean it, almost like a rock face. You kind of fluff all the 
car buy and everything a week off. And you leave in, you know, a strong thing that's still embedded into the matrix. The car buy is still embedded to the matrix. And so that, but you can refine it, which says, like, this thing is 240. By this time, it's about 240. And when you touch it, it actually, it clean everything off. When you go beyond that to something here, the green silicon carbide at 400 and 800 grit. And, well, at this point, you still do some plowing with 400, but actually, you begin doing, plow, it actually will, they try to knock the carbide out of everything, will clean the jaggedness of everything else, but at the same time, well, it's not really effectively safe the carbide itself. The carbide is about two to five microns. You're not safe in it. You either weaken it by collide to it, or you knock it out. And by 800, this thing is fairly soft. At leading, you will feel your knife dull. But I do that sometimes to clean the the edge shoulder, the bevel shoulder. To smoothen it, it's okay for me to knock it smooth so that I can, oh, more like a convex in there, so they can transition, so less wedging. So, that's a lot of yucking. Now, time to, so this is already very thin, uh, so I can start out. Let me, you know, by the time you get to the hairline, you should switch to 240 or something like that. And so, but, uh, for the angle wise, I'm freehand, I can use the Apex Pro, the, the width of the blade, and the gap, and if your stone is flat. So the width, if you total, you know, two of the gap plus the spine here together, is half of the width. That translates to, you know, one half over the rise of a run you get 15 degree. So, and if you have any, if your uh, stone is this, compensate for it because every angle of, uh, of this, you, when you cut into it, you increase by that angle. So your degree will up. So therefore you lower the spine. And yes, and then when you're traveling stroke, well, overall your, your bevel is going to be thinner at geometry why. So you do thinning and sharpen at the correct angle one you gotta know how to leverage the disc up your just stone. But I just firstly flatten it to simplify it because I'm not too anyway, so uh, for I just say okay, like that, right there, I'm going to gap estimation. It's sharpening, I mean, it, I'm not doing some sort of, well, try to land on Pluto or something, so. And I just lock my hand, and I, well, the, I don't want to scratch the handle here, so I lock my hand, I put my finger close by there, and I put my finger tip near the uh, cutting edge here, so that it uh, doesn't put too much pressure on my, uh, they want to tear it down. And of course I go around the curve, I either lift it, the handle up a little bit or swing into the stone. And using two hand is better. I mean ambidextrous. But I find it, yeah. Well I'm not that high of a dexterity. So but the objective is pretty much for this thing is try not to get, I mean, uh, to get to a uh, phone book slicing level, you can slide to anything. Again, you want to leverage the carbine on the apex and view that as a cutting edge, just like you have, say, like a carbine cut it for you know, printing press or something. You just want that. And if you want to shave your face with it, then perhaps uh, use something that uh, with a very fine carbine in the 250 nanometers range, or no carbine. And you have very 
good metric there and you have a good geometry, then you can shave. And you can shape the apexes the tie you want. Okay, so didn't need to be that fine. And okay. Switch to 240. This is black silicone carbide. 240 at this time. I'm still doing some plowing because it well let's see, uh, 240, the carbide size somewhere. Uh, let's see, hundred micron. So, but even that the pressure, the, the carbide sharpness dig into the matrix, I mean, up to the steel is not that deep, especially when the matrix is strong. So yeah, when you, I mean, on this case, you can say you do at leading, at trailing, they don't really matter a lot. And so at this point, I mean, after some time that after like this level, the it should be why I'm sorry about the angle of the camera, but it's you can do a lot with it. And let me see. Also, my hand is wet right now, so I'm not really, I can't feel much. Uh, it, it, it grabbed, but now when you go higher, for me, this, this is 400 here, I feel a little f coarser than that, and more like a 320, and it's very hard. The other store is less than $10, this is $10, and yeah, I got the fancy spot, but I need this. I feel that actually worked pretty well compared to my ceramic uh, satin. Uh, <laughs> so, so I prefer this guy over something more expensive. Yeah, this thing sounds very coarse. And right now is, let me. Cut the neat print with I mean from the paper with it and sorry. Sorry to click. Uh, hit the wet spot, hit wet hand. And the paper is moist. So there are a lot of uh grab. Now this when I lower the uh, I want to uh, smooth out the uh, edge shoulder for transition. And that's trailing. Because it don't, you're not, I'm smoothing the uh, cutting edge bevel shoulder. Of course, you be, you know, be more you can, uh, if you use softer surface, you can uh, convex it better, but I just knock this sharp shoulder off. And uh, I can just switch to diamond, but you know, now, but I'm going to do more polishing, so I'm going to get it trailing. Because now, if anything you do, you get pretty much, uh, when you got the mud or the loose, uh, brush of loose in this, it's leading into it, you get feel more dull because again uh, the carbide is not there. It, the thickness doesn't change too much, but the the uh, carbide teeth get got far off, so you feel dull. That's all. But it's still the, the apex thickness. It's still pretty much the same. And if you don't have diamond, say, then you can say, can I use a dead level, just these two cheap stones? Well, let's uh, do a quick test. So I, did, I will make this, uh, I'm, I, you know, I made a few of these knives, so I just try to make this as a guy, or, you know, if you, uh, okay. 
there's some some bird on here but also this paper right now is wet it's damp so it, so for some carbine and you see any side of burr it actually that means their ductility in, in in this edge so even though it's a 67 rock well i'm slicing some that off So now I need to clean it up. So next, I mean, you can clean it up with uh, fine, extra fine. And so I usually, if I'm going to, now you have the apex, and they have the, you know, fairly, I think it's not as well safe because uh, silicon carbide cannot do the job well. So. And now I, I just knock it over like this with the fine. Fine is about uh, 30 micron abrasive. And you can say, what angle I put it on? Well, you know, I can hit it of uh, 15 degrees per side or 16 or whatever. It, and so, and it's okay. Now I got that and switch over to Fine. At this point, it should be pretty good. All right. So, and if you decide, well, I have to have a little bit. I, I like feel kind of more sticky than. This is extra, extra fine, three, three microns. And uh, just like this play, it's extra, extra fine DMT. So I rarely use it because, again, uh, that's not the, uh, let's see, this side, okay, I can, uh, sometimes I get one on my, just like a, a little micro bevel, in, right handed into the cut. So they, instead of flake out, so I did my foot a tiny micro like that, over, I, I like to, it's leading, I go. Maybe next year I got a second pass, okay. Yeah, okay. So you can see I push cut in phone book, damp phone book paper. Um, it's very sharp. And you can see how this, let me measure real quick. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to get, okay, I'm going to be looking at the smooth bevel shoulder. It's somewhere. Uh, 6,000 or a little bit over. Tiny bit is 6.12 thousand of an inch. And so, well, of course, you know, we can say that, okay, I press cut. That means this is very thin. This is a slicer, not chopper. So, uh, but then I like said, this is uh, some ebony. It's actually really hard actually <laughs> so it's just like out of just like a Gabon Avenue but the, the little black street there is harder than Gabon Avenue and there's the black bamboo and don't live I mean don't do a lot of lateral that's all because again it's so thin but I can press a cut say bamboo These are not, I mean, like a lot of chopstick, it's a, not a black bamboo. They are really actually like soft bamboo. And uh, all right, yeah. But of course, after a demo, you have to kind of slice the paper again, make sure that the, okay, no major 
mash up. What over here? I didn't use it over there, but anyway. So, CBN can be. I just be careful, but uh, if you, oh yeah, I just want to be complete the thought here. I'm just looking at the uh, choy here. You can, it's almost not visible. Yes, it's that thin. And uh, so, if you're going to cut meat and everything else and you hit the bone, if you have to collide into hard, this steel won't have ductility, but the edge will ripple. I mean, well, it's not ceramic, like people say, and everything else. This is crystal we foundation heat treat. It's half ductility, but it will bend a little bit, ripple, and then it will curve. It won't curve past 90 degree. It won't completely roll. I mean, if you have a steel that completely roll, that means, I mean, well, unless you try to use for some sort of a impact a lot and you want it to smooth over, then yeah. So when you bend past you, it will fracture or microchip. The, if you cut a baton into wood, say, and you steer it, you bend so much at high level to the point that the thicker the steel the, 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 the diameter, young modelers will tell you, the less it can bend. So the bigger the fracture going to be. So understand the, you know, what the steel can do. And yes, the damage we will say if you have something that will roll over. Well, when you roll completely over, you actually have, you almost double the thickness of that apex at that point. Why are they, when you bend, when you get ripple over, you still only have, at whatever the extent, you only have that thickness of the ripple, of the base of the ripple. So it's less than roll over. So therefore, the two damage mode, yes, roll going to damage less. But if you're going to cut into something like ebony or bone contact, you have roll. Uh, and this thing here, the black thing here, is hard like bone. Your softness is not going to make it, especially at this level of softness. So you decide, you trade performance, but you don't really compromise a lot here. And you're talking about, in the end, you're talking about a race car, you know, Formula One, and so <laughs> street car. And this is Formula One, but can carry, you know, people, just like a sedan, except higher price. <laughs> Thanks for watching.